What's up guys, I'm RJ. First and foremost, happy new year, happy whatever you celebrated, Merry Christmas, any holiday you celebrate, I hope it was great. And I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And before we go any further, just know that this is the second time I've recorded this video because me not being prepared, didn't check the settings on the camera, and I went to edit it after 25 minutes of shooting and it was just unwatchable, unviewable, unfixable. So I'm gonna try and make it better because I was very happy with how it turned out, aside from the settings, obviously, but I'm gonna try and make this one a little better. So here's how it's gonna go. For those of you that follow me at all, you know that I'm planning on changing up the channel a bit. I'm going to add a podcast someday down the road, but for now, how we're gonna do things is, once a week, I'm just gonna share with you guys what I've picked up and, uh, and that'll just be easier than doing review after review after review because for me personally that got a bit redundant so hopefully that's cool with you guys i'll try and make it as entertaining interesting informative and whatever other adjectives you want to throw in there and that aside one more thing i want to share before we go any further is i get a question reoccurring all the time from countless people and they always say how do you afford to buy all these shoes um you know and, and i'm sure that that I'm sure that goes through a lot of people's minds, you know, when I'm sharing shoe after shoe after shoe after shoe for, you know, what's going on about a year now. And the truth is, I don't keep all these shoes. I'm sure that's obviously apparent to some of you, but for those of you that it's not, uh, you can kind of tell when I'm reviewing a shoe, if I'm into it or if I'm not into it. And I, I sometimes I even specify, you know, if I'm not gonna keep it, but just know that I don't keep all these shoes in my collection. There's no way I ever would. So sometimes I shoot a video, turn the camera off, and immediately I go list the shoes for sale. And then as far as where I sell my shoes, always on GOAT, more recently StockX. And I try my best to stay away from doing one-on-one -on -one deals on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, just because there's so much drama that can present itself when a deal like that goes south. So. Uh, I've also had a few of those happen, but there's no need to discuss that now. So, and also I have had a few good deals. So for those of you who are like, what about me? You know, I have had good deals and, uh, and I appreciate the ones that have happened, but for the most part, I stick to doing things where it's out of my hands. And I know that I'm telling the truth. And when I post my shoes for sale, it's exactly what I'm selling. So that's that. Just know that I don't keep all the shoes. I'm constantly rotating pairs in and out. I keep what I like. Some pairs I love them initially and I get tired of them. And basically if, if a shoe sits on my shelf for more than a month and I, and I don't have any use for it or I don't wear it, it's gone. And there are a few exceptions to that rule. Um, something like the Olive 1.0s will always be in my collection unless I liquidate everything. So without further ado, let's dive into these six shoes I've got. All Adidas as usual and that's because no one else is doing anything for me right now. Um, there are a few shoes that drop here and there, but they're just so unattainable that I can't even I can't even get a hold of them. And I also am going to end 2018 with less shoes than I have. And uh, and there's a little bit more to that story that'll that'll come to fruition in the future. So anyway, enough talking. Let's dive into the shoes. And uh, I've kind of got them in order from least favorite to most favorite. So first off, we've got. The Yeezy Calabasas Power Phase in gray. I did have these in the original colorway. I liked the original colorway a lot after I got rid of them. And then I loved when pictures started surfacing of these. And it's kind of weird because I like them a lot, but when I throw them on feet, no matter what I pair them with, whether it's shorts or jeans, sweats, joggers, whatever it might be, I just don't love them. So I am gonna be getting rid of these. If you're interested, you can maybe hit me up. I might consider doing a a deal with somebody if it presents itself but basically i think i just when it comes to a low profile shoe i just prefer vans you know and i've been wearing it for so long that that's my shoe of choice so i want to like these um because a lot of people make them look really good i just don't like them on my foot for whatever reason so as far as cushion and comfort goes it's not an ultra boost but they are a lot more comfortable than a pair of vans i can tell you that i've worn them for about a day and and they are comfortable so there is that, and then as far as sizing goes, true to size, 100%, no need to beat that horse. And uh, the only thing different from the first pair of Calabasas that dropped is the complete gray colorway. You got the same Adidas branding, red trefoil, gold Calabasas right there running up the side, and that's about it. Next pair. These happen to be the 350 V2 
blue tints and I wanted to like these a lot and I do I like the colorway a lot and it, it for some reason reminds me of uh, the platinums that Kanye did with Nike way back in the days because I feel like there's a few hits of color that were also used in that shoe that's the only similarity but for some reason I always like see those in my head when I see these and so the huge downfall to this shoe is that they just run extremely tight even with the insole out true to size I can barely squeeze my foot in here and so that's just really frustrating so it really all the hype that I had for this shoe has just kind of died and that sucks because if you go back to the V1s they came out really big and then eventually the V2s got true to size and now for some reason they are really small both the V2 belugas um, I mean sorry the 2.0 belugas and the blue tints are really really snug so I don't know, I honestly don't wear my Yeezys very often anymore, so I might just get rid of all of them altogether. Just something I'm running through my head, but nonetheless, you've got grays and light blues, obviously blue tints and uh, and some red hits throughout. But other than that, it's just a run of the mill, Adidas, Kanye, Yeezy V2, on to the next. All right, pair one from the latest sneaker exchange between Ah Ma Manier and Invincible. I I really hope I said that right. I'm sure I butchered it. I, I believe it's French and I am in no way, shape, or form fluent in that language. You've got the Ultra Boost from that collection right here. And I'm I'm just insanely in love with this shoe. You got full prime knit upper with hits of cashmere. If you can see the stripes right there, the three stripe branding in almost a beige creamish color is all cashmere and I don't know of any other pair of shoes that has cashmere in it. Very high possibility this might be the first pair of sneakers runners with cashmere woven in so who knows I'm just throwing facts out there. The other big part of this shoe is that it is uncaged. I don't think we've seen an uncaged Ultra Boost since the Haven drop and uh, and I actually really like those shoes as well. This is my favorite all white since the first 1.0. The only thing I would have changed is I would have added a light gray outsole. Cause I really like the gray outsole that uh, that Adidas has been using on some Ultra Boost here and there. So other than that, you've got the typical branding on the tongue tags, leather as usual, got leather hits all around that tongue. You also have leather on the top of the insole, co-branding as always. ATR strips right there to reinforce the lace system, all white laces and super unique pattern. This isn't uh, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. It's almost, uh, it looks to be very similar to the Ultra Boost Clima that's coming later on this year, but I'm not 100%, I, don't, I haven't seen those in person. So who knows, other than that, just your run of the mill Ultra Boost, same Ultra Boost midsole, ridiculously comfortable. And as far as sizing goes, I went a half size down because true to size, fit up by the ankle, but was really, really long. So if you're cool with that, get get them true to size, but I'm, I prefer my shoes don't look like clown shoes. The only drawback to a half size down is that it got really tight around the ankle. So just know that you'll be squeezing them on every time you wear them. Anyway, true to size, let's take a look at part two. You've got the NMDs and just like the Ultra Boost, you've got a prime knit upper, cashmere woven in, making up the three stripe branding. Leather hits on the back panel right there. Adidas Originals branding. Same co-branded tongue tags. Back has the Trefoil logo. Typical nylon pull strap for the NMDs. Leather hits around the lace system. And a super unique, almost uh, almost reminiscent of an Ultra Boost 1.0 knit pattern, which is why I love these shoes. For any of you that know me, know that I am not a big fan of the NMDs but the day I saw these online, I, I was in love. So I'm glad I got the opportunity to pick these up. They kind of set, these and the Ultra Boost kind of set for a while and restocked and took a month and a half to ship from social status and uh, the actual Mamanye shipment facility, I guess. I was in touch with them uh, left and right. And I know a lot of people had issues. Um, other than that, you've got an unremovable leather insole, typical NMD outsole, rubber outsole all white NMD bricks. The front does say Adidas. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick that up because it's super, super light white on white. So kind of hard to see. And yeah, other than that, just uh, they were actually called R2s. Um, as you can see, the box does say R2 right there. And I'm not exactly sure why. This is a NMD R1. So I have no idea why that was, but nonetheless, I love this NMD. I will be keeping it. It's one of probably three I'm gonna share with you guys today that I'll that I'll be keeping, so this is definitely one of them. Again, consortium sneaker drop, Adidas, 
Invincible, Ah Ma Manier. I hope I'm saying that right. I apologize if I'm not. I know the same guy who owns them owns Social Status, and I believe he might own one other company and his name is slipping my mind right now, but this entire collaboration was very well done and for whatever reason it's being slept on. So you can still pick these up for damn near retail. So do it, because they're awesome. Up until one week ago, these were my favorite Ultra Boosts ever released, but that title belt kind of changes hands like left and right because so many Ultra Boosts drop. You've got what is being deemed the Ultra Boost Lux, which is kind of a collaboration between Social Status and SNS, but not really branded at all by them. So it's kind of hard to understand how everything went down. So long story short, the two brands did a collaboration earlier last year and it was an Ultra Boost and it came out and it was gorgeous, all black and white, super unique, uh, unique knit pattern, same knit pattern that these shoes have actually. And everyone thought that was it. Then later on, late last year, a picture surfaced of these and people were speculating, oh, that's a sample, it's been canceled, it's been scrapped, we'll never see them, etc., etc. Then Adidas announced that they were going to be releasing them in-house and then Social Status announced that it was a remix of the original. So who knows exactly what's going on, but they are not branded Social Status or SNS and they are branded on the box as the Ultra Boost Lux. And I love this pair. Like I said, super unique knit pattern. You've got Nubuck around the toe box, Nubuck on the tongues. You got Adidas and Consortium branding on the tongue tags, both leather as well. Nubuck stripes running up the back panel of the shoe. Brownish, goldish TPU cages. Light gray Ultra Boost branded heel cups. I actually liked how both sets of laces look on the shoe, so I just went ahead and laced them up in both pairs so you guys could take a look at them. And lastly, my absolute favorite, I mentioned it a couple minutes ago, is this light gray Continental outsole that Adidas has been using on a few pairs. They've used them over the years, but nonetheless, I love this outsole. I think it would have set off the Maman Ye pair like no other, and uh, and it definitely does this pair as well. Matches the heel cut really well. So other than that, white inner liner, 100% true to size, no questions asked. These fit great with and without the insoles. So whatever your heart desires, um, I think you can actually still pick these up pretty close to retail as well. Comfort, it's an ultra boost on the next pair. And like I mentioned, this pair is sitting on top of the throne for me as far as favorite Ultra Boost. And I didn't think they were going to until I got them in hands. And they are the Chinese New Year 4.0s. Now real quick, before we go any further, the reason I gave you the quotation marks is because I had heard that these were gonna be scrapped and not released, and then Adidas announced they were dropping them. And as you can see right here on the box, they're just being called an Ultra Boost. They don't say CNY. It's not a special box. And both of the past CNYs, the 2016s and 17s, both came in unique boxes and were both branded CNY. And it's just really weird. You know, there were so many rumors circulating about this shoe. I really have no idea what the case is. And then on top of it all, Adidas announces a CNY pack that includes an EQT, a Stan Smith, um, and a couple other shoes that are slipping my mind right now. And they're just completely white with red and yellow hits throughout. So these are very unique compared to that shoe. And uh, the tongues do feature Chinese branding on them. So we're just gonna call them the CNYs. Uh, and all the BS aside, I love this shoe. I didn't think I was going to, I got them in hand and I was just blown away. Like just quality and design and, and, and everything is, is bar none. So we'll start with the upper, brand new for this year, 4.0 Ultra Boost upper. And it's just, it's so hard to, to describe. Um, you've got what looks like a black and gray base and there's just reds all throughout. And the red is just, I don't even know how to describe this red, just extremely vibrant. And uh, as you've seen online, if you've taken a look at the 4.0s, it's kind of like squared all throughout in the toe box. And then you've got straight lines going all the way up the tongue. And then it squares off on the back panel as well. And that back panel is probably my favorite part of the shoe, just super vibrant. The cool thing about last year's CNYs and these as well, is you've got just a really unique pattern on the laces. And they took that pattern and they continued to the inside of the shoe on the brand new Boost branded insole. As you can see, you've got bubble lettering right there as opposed to the old school Ultra Boost Endless Energy branding. And then this pattern that's on the laces actually continues throughout this entire inner liner right here, which is cool, very unique. And if you look at the sample pairs from last year's CNY, 
they did the same thing. And then for whatever reason, the retail pairs just stuck a black liner in there. So that was really disappointing, but I'm glad they went with it this year. It's, it's definitely one of the reasons I really like this shoe. Matte black TPU cage, matte black TPU heel cup, black ultra boost branding, head up to the tongue. You've got that Chinese branding that I told you about. I don't speak Chinese. I have no idea what that says. And I believe this year is the year of the dog, hence the jaw right there around the lettering. And if I'm wrong, I really apologize. I'm pretty sure it's the dog. Um, probably should have looked that up before this video. Solar red outsole, these have been worn already. I'm sorry, they are dirty. Continental branding right there at the top. And other than that, it is just another Ultra Boost, same midsole, but as far as colorway and, and all the uh, all the added little pieces to it, I love the shoe, like I said. This week, my favorite Ultra Boost, that will probably change when uh, they start releasing some 4.0 collaborations. I know the undefeated pair is supposed to drop here fairly soon. Like I said, this is kind of how things are gonna be laid out on the channel for a while. Hopefully you guys enjoy a bunch of content just shoved into one video. I know it makes it a bit easier for me and a little more fun, honestly. The solo videos were just becoming a bit more redundant. And uh, like I said, there's plenty more to come. I promise you eventually we'll get a podcast going. We'll get some guests on here and and just broaden the topics and branch out in all kinds of directions and just have a little bit more fun. I think I'm gonna start doing the on feet stuff for Instagram. So if you guys don't follow me there, it's at RJTV right now. Uh, gonna be doing a rebrand at some point too. So just, just stick with me. And uh, I'm really active on Twitter as of late. I'm kind of falling away from Facebook and and Instagram. Um, if you follow me, you can kind of see that. But same name over on Twitter, hit me up, follow me. Let me know what's good. Um, yeah, that's gonna do it. Again, appreciate all of you. Until next time, peace out.